Hello, welcome to another one of Studio Central's live art and chats video. Um, we have a physical location across the hall from where we are now where you can come and do some art, but if you can't make it in person, this is for you. We have um, a live art demo with Kate. So we are over here at Upbeat Artworks and surrounded by artwork of the Upbeat alum Artbeat alumni. So, and we're going to once again do a spotlight of one of our artists. This week it's Teresa Taylor, who is an incredibly talented painter. So I will flip the camera around and we can look at some of the art we have on the walls. Well, Kate reads the bio. <laughs> Teresa Taylor. Uh, Teresa Taylor was born in Swan River, LV in 1952 and was raised in a large family on a small farm where they lived off the land. Teresa would explore the woods and develop a keen sense of and love for the spirituality of nature. She began to draw scenery and animals as a child. Teresa married, raised three children, farmed and worked outside the home. She began to teach herself to paint in oils, while in her 20s delighting in producing landscapes and animals. She painted whenever she had free time. Teresa worked for the Canadian Mental Health Association and did voluntary work in the Caribbean and Mexico. She would imagine paintings in many of the places she encountered. She moved to Winnipeg in 2007. She's dedicated to helping others, hardworking and interested in preserving good health through fitness and nutrition. However, her passion is in her art and she is excited about expanding her knowledge of art and exploring new techniques and art forms. Teresa currently exhibits in galleries, fairs, and restaurants in Swan River as well as Winnipeg. Photo by Joanne Peter, inspired by Mark Here's the bio, and then the one big piece we have is this beautiful skyline of Winnipeg. Very eye-catching. You can see all the details. It almost looks like a photograph from far away, but it is in fact a painting. It is gorgeous. You can see some of the art we have. I will come back and we'll head over straight into our art video. Today, I'll let Kate introduce what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing is a very typical fall painting. Uh, I chose several amplifiers. We're going to have fall series, which are a bit different from what we were doing mm -hmm. in summer. In summer, we had things that were uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, for fall series, we would focus on just painting on canvas. It might be acrylic, uh, mixed media, or another medium. But the main thing, we would be zooming in um, what we're doing here, mm -hmm. and we would be choosing um, an image with less elements, and we would be focusing on something. So it doesn't have to be one object, but it won't be, uh, the background is optional, anyone mm -hmm. can add backgrounds as we go. Uh, also, uh, what I chose were images from the internet. So this one is the Christine's Kitchen Apple Pie Recipe, photograph for the recipe. They're all recipes. Uh, this one has ice cream on top, and this is everyday pie, the apple pie recipe. So that was the it's a la mode. <laughs> uh, this one is Betty Crocker apple pie food fanatic. It looks all delicious. And this one is apple pie simply foam food. So these are mm -hmm. images that I believe that many artists already painted this yeah and um i never did it on canvas i had tried on rocks but i am not sure i was choosing a photograph that could be not a photograph it could be a simplified image from let's say clip art yeah most likely so i would no i'm not sure what i want to choose it looks so appealing everything Looks very appealing. So what I kind of like the full pie. You want the full pie? I like that you can see the uh, all the what's it called? Not braiding, weaving of the like dough. 
but I'm quite sure there is a name for it, but I do not remember. Yeah, I'm like, there's a better word. Oh. But yeah, if you want to do that one, I'm sure you'll no, put a little nice. more attention I would onto that as well. Actually, of a slice rather than a whole pie, and I don't know. They're all really good to paint, and. I never painted the pie with an ice cream, actually, <laughs> as I never painted any of this. Yeah, I like that one too, where this you can one. also see the like see classic the apple pie. Before. Okay, I was this one was the first I printed out, and it was very exciting. And That's a good like composition in general. Yes, but you know what? I'll uh, I probably paint this one and. Yeah, that's yeah. a good choice. I might modify. I don't have to paint. Yeah, the same, you can so. also like what, combine mm -hmm. elements from elements each. From like, all. like I like the. I mean, we're not focusing on the background, but the apples in the background of that one are really nice. And then if you want to put ice cream on it, or uh, I could put apples differently. You'll be take yeah. uh, shading parts of the shading from here, or I could just imagine. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, stop on this. And the only thing, when I work with uh, setting up the image, I can tape it here, so I would need to for that. Yeah. And then I will be uh, showing a little bit of what I did before. So this is the tiger from previous Friday Live. I do not say it's finished uh, completely done. Uh, it still needs some work, but I'm not sure if I actually want to work on it or I could just leave it like this for some time or I could just pass it to someone uh, as a collaboration piece or I could just leave it the way it is, which is uh, something artists do when they feel it's not right for continuation. Thank I don't you. have any green tape, but <laughs> that looks beautiful. The rock, like, I don't know how you make a rock, like... I was trying to simplify it, so I never yeah. went with exactly what was there. Just, it looks so, like, so it's not real, <laughs> like, the depth you get with it. Okay, I think it's good to do from this side. Yes. Okay, so uh, for myself, it doesn't really matter if it's straight or not, so I could just keep it this way. Uh, I do not really copy the exact measurement. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there is paper for Oli, and Oli is going to work on the table, but we are <laughs> encouraging working small rather than big. Uh, and the time for the live, we want to show the finished product. Yeah. Um, yeah so we'll put uh, the brushes are here, we got water, we got everything. The brushes I chose are these ones because I'm not going to work on a lot of the elements. So I'm just going to work on the pie by itself, and then uh, the elements will be really, well, it's either blurred out or shown um, mm -hmm. similar. Yogurt. Um, okay, so let's see. The 
Tutorial badge again. Okay, so uh, there are several things we could do with paint. White for sure, we always need white. And then for mixing, let's say I want to create a shade like this. So I will take a pile of white because I want to lighten what I have. So I'm starting from white. Then I would assume this yellow, and this is called daffodil yellow. Then this one is sun yellow. So I have different shades of. So that's what I'm mixing, and then adding a little tiny bit of beige in it, and tiny bit of brown, would give the shades that I'm looking for. And then we could always add and remove. We could add yellow, we could remove. Um, I'm not taking black for now, even though it could be there, but I'm not uh, using black with this. So let's add more yellow and see what happens. It's quite a bright. So I could start painting, so the basic shape could be just the shape of the pie. Uh, and what I want to say is yellow is visible. Can you actually see yellow? And yes, yeah? you can see it. Okay. black after maybe but not in the beginning in the beginning i do not put these spaces as really dark because it happens in the process so the process would be um, adding highlight and adding dark spots afterwards so i'm not doing this right away We never make people care. So if the person doesn't want to pay, no obligation. Yeah. <laughs> Only doesn't want to pay an apple pie today, we're good. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a little bit behind the camera. But I actually wanted only to show her um, other paintings more. I really like the mice. <laughs> Apple pie results. That looks amazing already. But here's my <laughs> interior from before and my little mouse campfire. Which, if you saw our previous lives, you'll recognize where those are from. I feel like seeing your initial sketch is always my favorite part because it just 
takes no, form so quickly. Sketching quickly, but then I don't like sitting with a painting and mm -hmm. I don't have too much patience, which you can tell by the tiger. Oh so my gosh, I would so say beautiful. with the tiger, what I need to do is actually find a really good color and fill everything in here, yeah. all the little pieces. And here, uh, it needs more work. I just don't have that patience. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of patience and, you know, when you see, um, it, it can be a little bit too much. Well, everyone has different art styles, so I know myself, I don't have a lot of patience, so I was always, I always used to be very frustrated because my art was never perfectly clean, it was always slightly messy, but I've just learned to work with it, I call it like impressionism and move on from there. Oh God. No, the reason we paint here is not to actually stress anyone out, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to copy yours inside. Oh, oh really like sure, it. follow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that you have to do it so well. Yeah. I want that. I want that painting. Be mine. <laughs> That's uh, so. My, in my thinking, it's uh, follow uh, the artist. So it's for anyone who wants a little bit of a different look. If you are painting in, in a completely different way or drawing, and just trying this. I don't talk about the method, but it could be done with a pencil or any other material, uh, any media you can choose from. Uh, but also it can be painted on rocks, and that's what I was also thinking about, if someone is interested to yeah. paint a simple uh, pie on a rock, that would be a direction. Or clip art, clip art's always good. Or yeah. giving directions. You're overwhelmed by all the <laughs> details in it. I feel like one thing you're great at as well is like not to just praise you the entire time, but you're great at mixing colors. Oh. I am underdoing that, but it's it's done purposefully to not sink yeah. um, in in choosing and selecting yeah. the, the proper color because it's easy to do when I have the whole thing. It's easier to fix a spot here, a spot there, yeah. and add remove color rather than thinking about it at first. And that's the stage where I usually feeling like I don't want to do that anymore, but it's where it's supposed to be for me. Yeah, it's just the way of <laughs> the way of working on things. So here we're not focusing on too much detail and I'm thinking, can I actually remove part of the detail to not make it too complicated for everyone? Mm -hmm. Or should I actually work on more? <laughs> okay. I'm getting so lost. In, like I'm the one that was saying we should do the one with the, uh, what do you call it, weaving? Like, uh, there's a word. Google to the rescue. <laughs> Yeah, oh, whatever. Oh, Central. Yeah. We can go to Studio Central. Mm -hmm. Like, how, what do you, how do you make a pie? What do you, what is this? Um, I'm so not insisted on it now that I'm trying to paint it. I'm like, oh boy, this is much more detailed. Not, not too worried about it, just kind of feeling it through. One piece at a time. And again, uh, I got used to work with paint markers, so for me, uh, most of the darker areas, if it does not work out with paint, I can go and easily fix it with a paint marker, mm -hmm. which is thinner, and I can choose a fine paint, paint marker for all kinds of details. So if you don't have paint markers, that's a little bit of dif different choices you make in the very beginning. Yeah because 
Or maybe the same choice is just adding it with a thin brush afterwards. So here, I'm not choosing the exact shade for darker spots. I would be just marking them and then I would be able to add more to each of them. So here's the dark spot and uh, you can either take just brown or you can take a little tiny bit of black and mix it in right away. So this is something you can do. Um, I think I still need to show that because not too much. It's just a little tiny bit on the brush mm -hmm. and put it here. And that should be enough just to make the brown darker. And you don't have to mix it or you can pre-mix it with brown beforehand. So that would give the uh, approximately what you want. And then if you want to get the shade exactly the way it is there, it should take more time. But, um, it, or we could just start with dipping in black and just adding brown. I was not going to show that, but in case for some reason. <laughs> Okay, so another dark spot is right here. So I'm just going to define it. Another thing is to put black underneath. And you see when you paint, it just you think, okay, I can do it with just brown and then add darker. And then you do it just the way you are feeling. Change my mind a bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> a nice thing about. Uh... <laughs> Acrylics is you can kind of just paint right over if you don't like it. So here I see the dark spot. So I would be just following the shade and instead of just making a sketch with pencil and marking it, I do it directly with acrylic and I don't say it takes time. It gives a little bit more, I don't know, um, just painting right away is different from mm. making an exact detailed sketch. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little more loose, but like... It's looser, definitely, than... In a nice kind of, like, out. expressive, comfortable way. So now I would be doing the same thing, but with white. And I would be just adding white and I could add a little tiny bit of this tan, which is territorial beige mixed with um, white again, and some yellow. And then again, if you do not like this shade at first, you add and remove afterwards. So mm -hmm. that's what that's the base I'm making. It's not the shade that is exactly there. And then we keep adding thinner here and there. So uh, some artists would add directly on a very wet paint, some mm -hmm. artists would wait until it's dry and add paint mm -hmm. marker or some other detail, watercolor, shade off. Mm -hmm. Some artists would uh, have it almost dry and um, that depends on how fast the paint dries. So uh, I would say a lot of um, artists would not wait for a long time and just buy oil mm -hmm. which they can work on for for some longer times so they're not waiting until it dries because it never dries for them <laughs> yeah and then it's leaving and still working in it for a month or two but it, you probably want a studio for that yeah never used oils but i know they're a little more intense sometimes. Uh, oil is great, but if you have a cat at home, uh, his hair is everywhere. <laughs> so I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. And I don't want someone to walk into my painting because I don't have yeah. room for storage as well. So it would be something I cannot really uh, 
I cannot visualize them. I'm more I had an oil painting that I did in very quickly and then moved it to the basement and put it up yeah. and it was still something I would not feel comfortable because, you know, things fall on it and yeah. I don't know, it just needs to be exactly um, the space that is designed for paintings mm -hmm. and not actually um, yeah, for storage, it, it's hard. It's just hard. <laughs> and when, especially with drying resin, that was a struggle. With resin that is curing and you're not drying. Curing. <laughs> Why did they say drying? I don't know. Because they were talking S about similar, something. Similar kind of. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to mark the spots that are darker here and there with just territorial dash as the base again. Mm -hmm. So these are less dark than. Uh, than the very dark ones, but they still seem as dark mm -hmm. on this image. So what we can do, we can come in this. So this is apricot or apricot or whoever wants to call it. <laughs> yeah. So that's a combination that can give a little bit more color. So that could be mixed with white. Mm -hmm. That could be mixed with yellow. And then we're just going by spot here, spot there. So this is white. And you see the paint is very thin. So it would not give the same result as the thick paint, which would do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not what I was. So here, orange, I don't want the orange by itself. I want it mixed with. So the territorial bash does not have enough of that. And you kind of want to add to it, so this is one of the versions of what you can do. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so here I would say let's mix. So let's mix together. So I would mix yellow, this tiny bit of orange. You can tell just and from your palette that we're doing an autumnal, autumnal piece. Tiny bit of this territorial dash. So this, we can try and see if that works. Mm -hmm. So this is way closer. So the territorial bash does not have something in it, which is uh, oranges and yellows mm -hmm. we can put inside and that they could provide with a nicer shade. And then we definitely need white for the lighter spots and we can use darker brown for the spots that are a bit darker and just blend so here we have to blend and then more white 
in the spot that is lighter or we could wait until it's completely dry and imagine <laughs> imagine something <laughs> okay so you want to add red go for it yeah i love when people kind of add so colors. here we got the bright red Here what happens when you add tiny bit of red here and there. So this is the bright red. Uh, I have Christmas red. Christmas red. So it adds differently, but I don't want it to be all over. I want it to be in a spot here, a spot there, mm -hmm. so that would make the right variety of. So you see, it looks more orangey. You want to add more territorial beige. You want to add more white and yellow. So you get the whole variety of different combinations of what you have. And then I got another one. And this one is holiday red from Dollar Tree. What happens? It's a completely different red. It looks close to Christmas red, but it's a tiny bit different shade. So let's see. That's a very good shade. I like this shade. This is really nice. And the same way, using reds, I could and remove some spots. Mixing it with browns, that's what gives a really nice, you see the shade of it? Mm -hmm. It's red and brown. Okay, so, um, I also have Tutti Frutti. Tutti Frutti can be just a random try. So here's Tutti Frutti and the mixture. So it gives the little tiny bit of redness and it gives a good shade here but I want to add a little tiny bit of red to this line and to darken it I just use brown I'm sure it's thicker than I want it so that I would need to go around it with a lighter shade can just on the yellow one. Okay, it does not look appetizing yet. <laughs> you have to speak for yourself. <laughs> I would eat that in a heartbeat. <laughs> 
So here we got all the variety of different shades. Now just to work with them. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard to keep the details <laughs> separate. It kind of looks like a blob. But it'll maybe go somewhere eventually. So now from now on I'm just working with the shades I have. And white. Do not forget that we got white and it's the really very very needed. <laughs> I keep getting very confused between the different strips of dough. <laughs> okay. I have to keep them straight. And as an artist who never made a pie like this, I never made a pie in this uh, version. Yeah. The pies we make at home are different. They would be, as I'm from Europe, it would be European style rather than this style. Yeah. It's not. If you want to have it could look differently, but I would say lots of white for the apples, but it should be placed on top rather than mixing it with a paint right away. I mean, it was mixed with white, but you do not put too much white in it, and then we're adding white on top. The meaning is there. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> you, you didn't decipher that. Just look at the visuals. <laughs> no, it makes sense. So again, we're putting the base and adding removing to actually reach the right color. Areas that are very light, so we could just go... The same brush, we don't have to clean it after that. Mm -hmm. We could just start adding white and then add a shade to it. There. So I'm going through all the areas that are just lighter. just filling in to um, paint on top of white, which is an option. And you know, it's good to actually know that when you work with several different shades you can get confused and put the wrong one just just because it happens right yeah so it's always look at the image return it to what it was just fix yeah. it on top and the more you play with it eventually it starts to form like Maybe you're feeling well, the colors are too light, and so you add a little bit dark, and then it's too dark, so you add a little light, and you just keep going. I would say this is very enjoyable as, um, as work if you do not need to think too much on where everything is located for some. For some, enjoyment would be in actually figuring it out. Yes. And I don't know what my part is about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's overwhelming to have to think about everything. It's nice to just let your instincts take over. Yeah.
they see it's really really light here and then again the shape can be added after if I need it So instead of working with all this, we could pick cream, which I didn't have, mm -hmm. uh, or warm white it's called. Again, it's from Dollar Tree, and I would say it's good to work with. I just don't have too much. And then the definition can be added after instead of drawing it out from the very beginning mm -hmm. so now it has not too much definition because we mm -hmm. started with spots rather than uh, a sketch of an outline so we did not have the outline the way some would prefer it and again it's a preference so not really um, each time, if you ask an artist, how would you paint it, even? Uh, it could be different each time. For, for me, the next time I painted, it could be completely different. So you see, so this process is enjoyable, but also not everyone has the focus for that. Mm -hmm. And I would say focus uh, that person has, uh, it, I'm not talking about character or uh, choices or anything. It, it's at the moment, the person, mm -hmm. what the day is, what the person is thinking about. And then it's the way it goes out and you can never control Mm -hmm. Like how it works because it's the the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and if I move on to the same exact image the next day or even in a couple hours, you'll see a completely different picture. Mm -hmm. And I just want to follow up with the time. And what time is it? It is one fifty. One fifty. Okay. Yeah, but we start. we started a minute. So we can mm -hmm. go a little extra time. I think I did deliver the basic idea. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I can keep working on that. And then highlights, you know, what, when it's completely dry, if you're not satisfied with just acrylic, you want to recreate it. Here, I have... Um, Okay, so this one is both sided mm -hmm. uh, and it has the gray and the black. But these are Posca and the Tombow, and this one is a microline, mm -hmm. which has a brush. So this one is enjoyable for some artists who love the brush. Yeah. And also, I got a uh, black and white Posca, which are just opened recently, um, not the right one. Mm -hmm. I did not bring the one that was opened yesterday, I brought the other one. Yeah. But uh, they work. So if I need to fix a little tiny spot, that's okay to use paint markers. Uh, and I sometimes use paint marker and a brush. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use uh, paint marker and um, again a brush it yeah. would be just a brush for me I don't use don't like using fingers sometimes really yeah. rarely I used to do that all the time but now I'm yeah, yeah so uh, this is the progress for now and I think it's good to see the way it is yeah here's an update on mine still looking a little bit blobby but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we'll it's get taking it. More. We'll get to it, and I think that's quite enough to pick up ideas for someone who never painted it or mm -hmm. never um, 
not every most i am the type of an artist who does not like watching tutorials or watching what other artists do mm -hmm. so for me it would be just figure out what what's the best for you so maybe that's the problem that i do not have enough of proper wording for sometimes because for me it was the process of me painting yeah. not thinking about how to word it that's kind of why we also have the video as well as the Right here. Anyway, uh, I'll keep working on that. Yeah, and we will post the results. And we will see everyone next week for another painting video. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. See you.